and now we're going to finish the installation of uh, Windows XP. Most of you guys probably know how to do this, so I'm going to fast forward uh, through the entire clip. Um, it's sped up 10 times. I need to get under the 10 minutes for this video. So basically, what you see here is just, um, just a regular installation of Windows XP. Can't show you my product key, so let's fo unfocus that. Uh, set time and custom settings for work group and network. Small adjustment of the camera and installation just breezes through. Nothing more fancy about this actually, so probably could have sped it up some more. Uh, but it, it's probably nice to see that the entire process is not problematic. Installation reboots the computer, you finish all the settings, and uh, nothing fancy here. When you get into Windows, you'll see in Device Manager that there's a whole lot of devices that need drivers. They have yellow exclamation marks. And I used the CD for that, but basically you should have downloaded the latest drivers from Gigabyte, but uh, it's not necessary. You can use the CD, at least for the network card, so that you can uh, use uh, upgrade utility and download all the other drivers uh, as the latest version. Uh, here you can see just the drivers installing, nothing too fancy about it. And another reboot, and more installing of drivers. Takes a while to do this, I guess. And the driver installation requires another reboot and some more installation. And after yet another reboot, you'll see that the only device needing a driver is the video card. It's the only one with an exclamation mark. Try to update uh, via device manager. It doesn't find any drivers, so we'll just go online to NVIDIA and download the correct driver for my 9600 GT. And just downloading the driver, installing it. Everything is like normal. And we reboot. And after this reboot, we are done installing Windows XP. Uh, checking Device Manager would show that you have uh, no devices that needs additional drivers. Let's go into the BIOS and check our settings. Um, the hard drive and the DVD-ROM is connected to the J-Micron disk controller. You see that as channel 4 master and slave. We'll go in here, hard disk boot priority, set my Snow Leopard drive as the first hard drive. That will make that hard drive boot when you boot your computer, so you get the bootloader. And you see here, the Intel controller is in AHCI mode and the J-Micron controller is in IDE mode for the Windows drive. And finally, we can now test our dual boot. And um, we'll just boot off the Snow Leopard drive like you've done earlier before you install Windows. And you'll see here that the graphical user interface of uh, Chameleon turns up. I'm not sure why it shows two Windows drives because I have only one. I think it might be some small issue from my earlier testing. And we press enter to boot Windows. And we're stuck with a blinking cursor. And that kind of puzzled me because I've done dual boot on my old Hackintosh and it worked like a charm. Uh, if you see here I boot Snow Leopard, that boots normally. So there's an issue here <laughs> about um, Chameleon and uh, XP, I guess. So uh, you see here, Snow Leopard boots normally.
And after quite a bit of googling, I found several threads that uh, spoke of the same problem. If you have Windows on a second hard drive, especially Windows XP, uh, and you boot from uh, uh, the first hard drive that has the Chameleon uh, bootloader, uh, you will not be able to boot Windows XP. Uh, not sure, I can't confirm if it's a problem with Windows XP or if it's a problem with Chameleon. But um, the fact is that uh, if Windows XP is on the second hard drive and you don't boot from that drive, Windows XP will be unable to boot. But there are ways around this. Uh, one of them is to create a boot menu uh, by making a boot.ini file on the Windows drive and booting from the Windows drive uh, first. And in the boot menu you can then select uh, Snow Leopard if you want to boot from that or Windows XP if you want to boot from that. Probably you can set up which is the default as well. If you have Windows Vista and Windows 7 you can use a program, program called ECBCD that will create a boot menu using the Windows Vista, Windows 7 integrated boot menu thingy. Um, I also know that if you use Windows 7 64-bit you will be able to boot the Windows drive from the Chameleon bootloader. I've spoken to several Hackintoshers that um, that's no problem. They have used Chameleon bootloader with the Windows 7 64-bit and there's no issue that it just works. Um, but uh, using ECBCD or creating a boot.ini file in Windows requires you to do something you've probably never done before and I'm gonna show you an easier way to do this and um, that requires no tinkering you just need to check your BIOS settings that you would have to do anyways and then use the in integrated boot menu of the motherboard. So um, let me take you through the, the way to do it. First check that you have AHCI mode enabled on the Intel disk controller. Then check that the JMicron controller is in IDE mode. This is the controller you have your XP drive connected to. And in the hard disk boot priority, you set which operating system you want to be default. In my case, it's Snow Leopard. Then when you boot your computer, you'll see uh, at the post screen, there's in the far lower right corner, there's F12, boot menu. And if you press that, you will get this uh, boot menu from your motherboard. You go into hard drive, hard disk, and choose which hard disk you want to boot from. Normally, if you want to boot Snow Leopard, you don't have to do this, but if you want to boot Windows, you just choose your Windows drive. So it means that without tinkering with any boot any file or ECBCD program or anything else, you just press F12 if you want to boot Windows. If you want to boot Snow Leopard, you just push the power button on the computer, let it boot, and you're all done. Hopefully, uh, all my viewers that has requested um, a small guide or whatever on dual booting Windows on your Hackintosh now has a lot of info they can work from. Uh, hopefully, you can get this working with Windows Vista or Windows 7. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have Wista or Windows 7 so I will not be able to create a guide for that but um, hopefully this is valuable input for you guys and I hope you enjoyed this video and please rate and comment if you have any questions or or just wanna say what you mean thanks for watching guys have a nice day